I would like to uh, ask you to read um, the last two poems we'll read will be somewhat ontological, I suppose, um, Through the Water. This is the poem that when I wrote it, um, uh, I knew that I was going to be publishing a new book. Um, I knew mm. I could I could feel a whole beginning to form from the poems I had been working on. And this was the one that 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 distilled them. Um, boy, this is the theme today. It's a, this is a very von Balthasarian episode, seeing the form and seeing the whole. This is the poem that, mm. that made a whole visible to me through the water. I was talking about winters earlier. This it, it 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 begins with an epigraph from Ivor Winters, which is just a note on his poem uh, called The Castle of Thorns. And Winters writes, he must in some way cross or dive under the water, which is the most ancient symbol of the barrier between two worlds. Far back within the mansion of our thought, we glimpse a lintel with a door that's shut and through which all our lives would seem to lead though we feel powerless to say toward what. It is the place where all the shapes we know give way to whispers and a gnawing gut. And so, in childhood, we will duck beneath the waterfall into a hidden cove. In summer, pass within a stand of pines cut off from those bright fields in which we rove, whose needles lay a softening bed of silence and great boughs tightly weave a sacred grove. When winter settles in and our skies darken, we take a trampled path by pond and wood and find beneath an arch of slumbering thorn stray tufts of fur, a skull stripped of its hood. Then turn and look down through the thickening ice in wonder at the strangeness of the good. And Peter, Peter, falling through that plain where he had only cast his nets before and where behemoth stalked in darkest depths that sank and sank as if there were no floor, he cried out to the wind and felt a hand that clutched and bore his burden back to shore. We know that we must fall into such waters, must lose ourselves within their breathless power until we are raised up, hair drenched, eyes stinging by one who says to us that from this hour we have passed through we're dead, but have returned and are a new creation come to flower. Let's let's conclude with another poem, and it's the, the concluding poem in your book. It's a nice note to end on. Uh, and like uh, the after dinner toast, it also contains a little bit of reference to some of the other things we've observed in the past year besides the uh, quarantine. Yes. Yes. The, the, the book originally was to end with the quarantine notebook. Uh, it was. It, um, it's it was it's a long 15 part poem it, it takes half the it's comprises excuse me composes half the the volume um but no sooner had i finished it uh in late may than i saw uh what was about to overtake what had overtaken our country and was about to overtake our country and i thought i had to make some kind of acknowledgement of that for the sake of the book uh otherwise the book would already feel dated and it hasn't even been published yet um and, and for the need to, to say something. Um, uh, so this is a poem called When. When noisome crowds turn out to flood the beach and with their flesh despoil all in reach, when some boy burns his hand and squeals in pain only to touch it to the stove again, when waiting for a carousel at the park you see pale tattooed bodies purple dark when this drunk stranger brags with all his force about his past adulteries and divorce, will you look on it all just as you should and in that sordid wreckage find the good? When you turn over leaves upon the vine where lantern flies cling gorging each veined line, when great winds shake the trees and cut the power leaving you in the darkness of the hour, when in the nursing home your mother dies cut off from muttered prayers and useless cries when every argument begets a roar and every careless thought erupts in war will you maintain what once was understood that even now the world as such is good and when they hunt him through the soaking heat to leave him crumpled in a bloody street and when behind calm eyes he seems to gloat and press his weight down 
on another's throat. And when you see them standing calmly there, indifferent as his last word dies in air. And when the glass is cracked, the streets aflame with no words spoken, but that burning name. Will you stand as the Lord of all once stood and somehow say that things are very good?